Hi, Sportster Paul. Today we've got this 1982 iron Sportster, cast iron cylinders, cast iron heads. We're going to yank the cylinders and get the pistons out of it. Uh, this is one's pretty quick, four, four nuts, 9 16 inch wrench, slide it off. Putting it back on, there's fancy ring compressors that you wrap around the piston and compress the rings and then you slide the pistons over it. I found just clamps work. So that's my trick there. Going back a little to the cylinder heads we got off a couple shows ago, I made this little homebrew thing to hold the cylinder head in a vise. Piece of angle iron, piece of round tubing that I put a bend in it. Let's see, yeah, maybe you can see it on the, the side cam is now the three quarter cam, and then welded a spark plug to it. So that can go in, this goes in the vise, that holds that. And then I don't even remember where I got this. Maybe Orchard Supply Hardware, this is the valve compressor. So you can come in here and compress the valves and get that. We'll do that later. Those heads are fresh rebuilt. So I don't think they'll be much of a problem. I do want to pull them out, make sure they're, you know, me and crazy clean, uh, meticulously clean, get the valve stems clean, little 60 weight, put it all back together. So what else is going on? Big news. Thank you to Staples, who doesn't sponsor anything. I just found they were the best deal. End the pandemic, like April 2021. These are really useful storage bins. This is the 64. I'll bring up the 32 liter, 64 liters here. They have this goofy kind of heart. I first saw them at uh, Office Depot in San Jose, California. They had them stacked there. The thing about these, they've got these, what do you call them? Philisters, flying buttresses. It's got these buttresses here in the corner. It's a stronger plastic than some of these other junky ones. You can stack these full of Harley parts. I think they were intended for paper, right? Which is almost as heavy as Harley parts. So it got, I got to think, what am I gonna do with all this when it's apart? I wanna keep it clean. I won't put the dirty stuff into these. I will go clean the dirty stuff at a wash station. We'll show you pictures of that. So here's the big ones. They have this, you know, kind of goofy thing here. Can you see? Not really. Uh, they got little holes where you could put a lock on it. That's all silly. I got four of them. And then these from Staples came a three pack, 75 bucks or $71 for the three pack about 26, 30 bucks each for the big ones. But you get three for selling you know, 25, whatever. Same thing, each one has the little heart, heart thing in it. The smaller ones are good because you know, if you're gonna have heavy stuff and you wanna be moving this. So that's my intent, to see if I can get the heads and cylinders into one of these with the corresponding little bags of parts, the rocker arms, all of that. Same thing, see, it's got these structural members going down. So when you stack them, it brings strength all the way like beams on the corners. I haven't found any others that does this. And because they're obviously smart, clever people, I said, I, I got the box. It's like, oh, this isn't three of them. This will ne they, they don't nest. See, that's the bad thing. Because they put these here, you can't put 50 of them, you know, that tall, stack them all up. Uh, what do you call it? You know, slid into one another. So the retailers hate it because it takes a lot of space. But I love it. And then look how clever they are. You know, this was on the top. They put the third one sideways on the inside. And like all of them, so there's the third one. There's a stupid little piece of paper. Good opportunity. Really useful storage boxes. And like, and, and this is when I moved from San Jose, California to Florida. You know, they nest really good. They lock up good. Now, because the plastic seems to be stronger than a lot of this other high-density polypropylene, HD, whatever, one of the boxes in the move, you know, 3,000 miles from San Jose to Florida, had a starburst here where, like, something really heavy. I don't know if that's one of the guys, movers, dropped it or if it was really that violent in the truck that something slid. So they're a little more brittle. Look at this. I just noticed first time there's three-quarter, one-half. But these are great. Now, here's the thing about ordering them. Staples had a better deal than Amazon, right? I'm not going to push Amazon just because my buddy's got affiliates. The best deal was here. Um, the boxes, right? The big ones come in this heavy, thick, strong box. So you get more storage 
because of the box that it comes in. This one came in a box, you know, that three up. So one box for these three. So let me show you like the big ones. Here's in the side room where I store the Harley stash. Here's a picture of the Gorilla Rack. Gorilla Rack I got at Home Depot decades ago. I assume you can buy them at Home Depot still. Maybe, maybe not. You never know anymore. So the Gorilla Rack works out good. You can set the shelves right. They put this cheap fiber board for the shelving. You need to go find plywood and replace it. Cut some plywood to fit because it's way too thin and too, for Harley parts, it's, you know, too flimsy. Uh, you could actually double it up, right? You could put the piece of plywood down, half inch is probably enough, half inch plywood. And then if you want, you can save the fiber board and put that on top, but I'd pitch the fiber board. So the Gorilla Rack is a great way to, I'm trying not to talk too loud because at first I had compression on and it was hunting, then I turned everything down and I can't get it any quieter. I gotta buy an attenuator. See, it's pegging the red a little. I'll try to talk soft this whole show. Okay, so there's a Gorilla Rack. Now, check it out. Here's the same Gorilla Rack a few minutes later when I took the storage boxes and stuff that was up on top of that Gorilla Rack. You can see are in nice brown, really useful delivery boxes that have got, you know, kind of clumsy, big stuff, stuff that I don't necessarily see. Obviously, you can take your magic marker and write what's in the box. So that was just a great thing. Now, the, these small ones here, I've got another rack, bought at Home Depot. It's one of those that's half height, and then you stack them. There's a little clip that connects the top and the bottom, which really freaked me because it's just the edge of those angles on the corner, but butted together. I was always worried, but they've stayed together, you know, 20, 20, 30 years through all these different moves to this new house. So here's these things. Here's a picture of the small rack. And there, the, the big rack, I kind of divided up. Oh, this is this bike. This is that bike. This is this bike. This is miscellaneous. Here's a Thunderhead. This one is more like, well, here's carburetor stuff. Here's transmission stuff. Here's clutch stuff. Heavy stuff on the bottom. And now I can swear I had these stacked this high when I moved, you know, full of transmission parts. Now I tried to put the heaviest stuff on the bottom and the carburetor stuff and air filters up on the top, but it's just great. You can see them. They, they do come like in a smoke color. My buddy bought, I think directly from the really useful site. You don't want that. You want just the plain clearest you can get so you can see inside and know what's what. So we'll get this put off. Is this kind of out of the way? Well, out of the way enough. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, when I get this apart, right, it's going into this, this bin here right now, the heads and rocker boxes. Then it's going to go out to the garage, maybe the kitchen, depends. I don't have water hooked up in the garage yet in this new house. So here's a picture of the parts washer. It's, it's a combination. It's a stainless steel kitchen sink that my buddy got from Litton when they closed their machine shop. And then the metal racks around it are a semiconductor equipment like, like washrooms and stuff to where they make semiconductors. They sell these racks and they got all kinds of fancy plastic. So I cut that up, you know, torched it and got it to fit the sink. The sink goes in it. Uh, here's the uh, grunge from, from the, the basket on the top where I put all the, the stuff to clean it up. Here's the top where these semiconductor things have stuff. There's, there was a clear plastic top, so light can go through it. Also good for storage. Uh, the parts washers I use, here's the you know, $49 Taiwan or Chinese parts washer uh, with solvent. Here's the inside of it. From decades of use, the pump stopped. So now the pump and the little washer, I gotta buy a new one. I'll do that before, you know, ne next couple shows. Uh, here's the solvent that I put. I got this at AutoZone or one of the auto parts stores here in Florida. It's safety clean solvent. Maybe I bought it on, uh, no, I think I got it at an auto parts store. Five gallons, expensive. It's like $100, which is ridiculous. I think they're baking in the disposal price, right? And then to really clean stuff, takes paint off, right? Here's ChemTool, Barrowman's ChemTool. That stuff, chem dip, I'm sorry, I said chem tool. See my, I told you to keep notes. Uh, chem dip. So 
that will take paint off that's used for the carbs. I also, in my carburetor shows, you can see I bought a little $200 ultrasonic cleaner. And then you can use the ultrasonic cleaning solutions and use that to kind of clean stuff up. So that's a tip. Last thing I wanted to talk about before we, four bolts and two pistons, seeing stuff, right? Like I'm, I'm examining those rocker shafts and I'm looking at them. Well, these are reading glasses. But 3M, here's the kind I like. I think they're Nuvo, 3M, N-U-V-O. They're reading glasses for old people like me. You know, they, they're like bifocals. Can you see? Yeah, you can see the little bifocal part right up there, right? And you can get them in whatever strength your reading glasses are. So you have safety glasses now where you can read the instructions and then go look at stuff what you're working on. 3M also makes, I found in my stash, a BX version these are good. You know, they got these kind of wings on the side. Here, let's do it that way. Can you see? And these are great for night uh, vision, you know, on your motorcycle. Put them on and they shield the wind really good. They fit in the bridge of my nose. Same thing, a reader. So when you want to read the instruments or anything down here, you can see it when you got your far vision, you're going good. Then every machinist friend, the headband magnifier, it adjusts the headband here, goes like this, swings up, do your thing. Then you're going to examine something, bring this down. There's this little one I hardly ever use that swings in front. These you can get on Amazon. Uh, they come in different, what they call focal lengths, for how much magnification. The high magnification ones, you got to be right here. I prefer a slightly lower magnification. You can see more up to you. There's at DigiKey, this electronic distributor, because I used to do a lot of electronics, they make like a simple one like this, and the, the lens just slides in. You wear it like this, otherwise the lens falls out. I learned that the hard way. Can you just see what this is about? And, you know, this snaps on, and same thing, you can swing it down, you can swing it up. If you can see stuff, you can fix it. You can see what's wrong, you can see what's broken. So that's that. We'll put these over here for now. While we're on the topic of storage, I was missing, just like I was missing two head bolts, I was missing one cylinder base nut, 9 16 nut. How are we doing? We got, okay, I think we're recording everywhere. Yeah. So for this, I probably got this at Home Depot. It says stack on here. All right. And what I like about these is it's not the removable partitions where washers and stuff slip underneath. These are hard partitions. And I don't know if the Skycam will get this. Not if I don't show it. Here it is. So, you know, good for all the little stuff. Rubber mounts. Uh, here's the uh, transmission nut for the sprocket. Stuff like that. And here's where I had, I actually have four chrome one of these. Uh, of course, nut chrome nuts, not so good. So I should convert, you know, I've got all these old ones, all this different. So you might see them on that narrow rack I showed. Uh, all kinds of different ones I should standardize. Although it's nice to have the different brands because then you say, okay, those are shims for the, the transmission. Oh, th these are the nuts and bolts, odds and ends. So that's other storage stuff. So, I told you last show about putting rubber bands and a paper towel here to keep this stuff clean. You can see there's still shop towels, white shop towels. Here, if you're just doing a top end or something, you got to keep the dirt, right? Like I said, I'm nuts about keeping dirt out of a motor. So, let's get to the meat of the show. Here we go. I'll start back here. If you're lucky, see, and I always use antices, like I showed you the last show. Oh, we don't have a place to put these. Yes, we do. Always, always an emergency. Here we go. So we'll get, we'll get the, this base nut off. I took a little time to show you all this other stuff. Maybe I should flip it around and do that at the end of the show. This was the one I just put on that I got out of that storage box. You can see the, the bins back here with nuts and bolts. That's where I put nuts and bolts. I'd like to go back. I gave them all away like a dummy because they were heavy. Uh, when I moved from California to Florida, 
I had all the three eighths bolts, all the three or you know quarter twenty. I had fine thread, you name it. Gave it all away, so and missed it about the first month I lived here. So I'd like to get back to those metal Acro Mills boxes, which you can't get at the hardware store. These aren't tight enough. I think this is 30 foot pounds, no washer. I don't put the uh, Loctite. I'm, I don't like gluing a bike together, right? They didn't put Loctite at the factory. There's no need for you to put it on here. I did have a cylinder loosen up once, you know, just daily wear. It makes the weirdest sound. It's like a whooping cough, <laughs> stuff like that. Took it to the bike shop. What's going on? And uh, Carl, who was working with Duncan Keller's shop at the time, it's an old trick. I knew it for cars. You get a rubber hose, right? Short section, heater hose or something. And then just start putting it around. He also did the trick of spraying, like you can use carb cleaner to find an intake leak. Because that was his first thing. Oh, maybe this is an intake leak. Watch out. Stop the bike. We've got to fix it now. But don't drive home. Instead, he, he sprayed it down here. And you could hear it change, right? It made a difference. So two seconds, right? You could, we could do it right at the shop. You could tell it was loose there. Can I do this backwards? I doubt it. Where are they? Here they are. Oh, they're loose. Are they? Oh, <laughs> that, that's not the cylinder base nut. That's the rocker. All right. Uh, Antices on these. Vance Breeze, the racer, told me Antices actually works a little like Loctite. That even though it's slippery oil and aluminum kind of stuff, It's like having kids and figuring out how to button buttons and tie tennis shoes from backwards. It's like, all right. But I, I like this setup. It seems to be a good way to show you the tools, show you all that stuff. Get this one. So the front head should come off now. These aren't tight. Oh, that one, well, 30 pounds isn't much. If you can, maybe a snap-on or, you know, you can get a good torque wrench in there. It's good to feel it once, you know, and then you can tighten and loosen the nut with a regular wrench just to teach yourself how little 30 foot-pounds is. Because it's a fine thread 3 8 bolt, I can't remember, what is it? It's not 28, that's quarter 20. 13, where are we? The wrench just reaches. Oh, this one's loose already. And when you put it together with antices instead of Loctite, then you can do this, right? You can just spin it with your finger and the nut comes off. Also, it kind of protects the threads. So, you know me, work out of the box. Put the wrench back. Oh, darn. What's going on? I got an interference. Hang on. Now we got it. So here's the nuts. So I'll go here. those in our bin. Eventually, when everything's cleaned and washed and solvent, they'll go into one of these really useful boxes. Like I say, without a Kickstarter, see, in, in the frame, you got to make sure that piston's down to get the piston up. And, well, this one, the back one. If the piston's up, you won't clear it. So you'll have that joy to figure out. Hopefully, you'll be able to take the front one off. You'll be able to grab the piston and just move. We're going to find out in a minute if that works. Okay, there was the front one. Uh, we got to put it here. We're going to wash all this. Well, can you move it? <laughs> no. <clears throat> I guess that's that thing of have a spare battery. Don't, you should disconnect the battery doing any of this. And then a spare battery you can touch to, if you got to get the piston down to get this up, hit the frame rail and pull it out. Uh, no piston rings in this. Okay. That's going to be interesting. And a lot of carbon. Ooh, loose carbon. Careful. We're already screwing up. Um, I'm going to act like this is a top end, right? I'm going to act like this is going back together. So you, that little flake of carbon, let's go get it. Doesn't take much. Here it is. Stuck to the side of the piston. There. Now let's see. I don't think this is in here. Can we get back here? If it's in gear, I could understand it, right? Is this bike in gear? Might be. Let's do this. Oh, 
down. Move the uh, shifters just a little loose. I think that's first. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, there we go. I think that could be neutral. I'm not sure. I like when stuff goes wrong when I'm filming because that's how it goes normally, right? Well, I'll have to get this cover off and see because I know... Oh, okay. It's not impossible. Of course, now I put it all the way down. I should have pulled... There. And let's obviously too big oh just one of them not a well maybe we can use one this you always worry about these rods clanking here matter of fact you see a little bit of denting and you worry about the dirt so let's get that like this notice it's a brand new clean shop towel remember it's like a doctor operating you're cut open would you want all kinds of grunge now oh well we're going to have that joy where do I have them? I think up in this long one. Yes. I've got Skycam, get it? This cam. All these snap ring pliers. This one says China, so you know it's junk. It's one of these ad adaptable ones that'll go in and out. It actually feels pretty good. Let's stick it in here. See how close they get together is going to... So you get the snap ring. See, the looseness... See, this is why Chinese stuff is junk. See that looseness? That means when it's under tension, these are opened up enough that the ring doesn't close. Oddly enough, 50 years ago, not quite, 40 years ago, Craftsman, back when Craftsman was something, somebody else bought them. So there's straights and there's angle. I don't know if I can get this angled one in here. I don't think it'll fit. It won't. So I'm going to stop the filming, change these with screws. This one works. We can try real quick. Let's try this one. I just, you know, it's one of those things. One of these, oops, well, that got them closed enough. This is... This is a single use, right? It doesn't expand and contract. See, but these, the tips are, if the tips aren't really hard and steel and really nice, more junk, right? Come on. Partially. Okay. Let's take my own advice. Take my own advice. Do I have any? I got little tiny ones. I doubt these will work, this stuff, right? Like I say, I'm glad when all this stuff kind of screws up. Ah, I'll be darned. The little tiny one worked the best. This one, we know what we do with this back here in the garbage. So, Where's, here they are. Please let there be two of these, one for each piston. So be very careful not to lose this stuff. Some people say never reuse these rings. Okay, so that ring goes in there. We're getting ready. Uh, you can take both rings out. It won't kill you. Let's do that. I'm gonna come here. Hopefully the side cam is showing. Get this one here and here. Squeeze it together. Out it comes. And the other reason you want pit towels, so if you drop one of these, if it goes into the engine, 
That's a life-changing moment. Keep track of your stuff. Now I always <sighs> found a socket that fit. Let's see if in English, 9 sixteenths. How's that fit? 9 sixteenths seems to fit good. This is a little shade tree. Is it moving? I'm pulling it to me because, you know, obviously you don't want to be putting a bending force here. That's good. And because I'm hammering, it's good I got the safety glasses on. And let's try the plastic end. Little pieces of plastic. Still not quite enough. Pulling so that you're not and light taps. Now it's going easy, right? And not easy enough. Well, I'm having more trouble with this than any human being deserves. There we go. Put this here. Oh, made a mistake. Where's my here? This is the rear. rear and you'll note let's see if I can make it clear there's a little divot right here that's the intake side because the intake valve is larger and it needs clearance so as it was in the correct position the little divot here is on the intake side no divot here so you gotta at least say because you know you could put it in like this on the front say rear no no shame and right on the side, either rear. Now, you got your two clips. This bead blasting. I built a homemade bead blaster. Did I show you that? Oh, here's a picture of the bead blaster that's under that sink. Kind of cobbled it together. That's why there's a shop vac there, too, to hook up to the bead blaster to evacuate the bead, uh, the, the compressed air that you're blowing in with the bead blaster. Duncan learned the hard way. If you got a whole bunch of air pressure, you can actually, not so much a Sportster piston, but a big bike piston, you can actually mushroom it out a little bit. So light pressure, you know, you can clean this carbon off. Uh, wire brush will work as well. It's interesting, it's not scuffed. Let's see if we can, I think this was the one I used, yeah. So I, you know, I put this uh, up here, tighten the hose clamp. Can you see it? Tighten the hose clamp, and then poof, cylinder slides down the rest of the way. So we'll, we'll have a much later show for that. Meanwhile, I got both rings here. This is marked R for rear. Always good. So now, You, you watch some hack mechanics, you know, they throw stuff and drop it, and then you wonder why everything leaks, right? Every corner, every gasket surface gets piled parts on top of it with little sharp edges cutting. So this is good. We'll keep this over here. Let's see if we have better luck with this one. Where's our... This was a kit, because there's red ones and black ones. Let's go look at the red one. What's the difference? Red ones are smaller. The, the tip is smaller. And then, oh, all this nonsense is, I think, for this multipurpose one, which probably is also going to go in the garbage. What's it say here? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, China. It might be going to Pittsburgh via the Sunnyvale or the Brandon dump. I'm not going to give up on it yet. Meanwhile, Let's get our thing. It's a little, for as much light as I got in this shop, it's actually a little dark. Okay, so we squeeze, 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 gentle, out it comes. Am I lucky? And there's <laughs> the last one. All right.
Ooh, the, uh, that goes there. I mean, if, if you have a, a drift smaller than the circlip, you can pound the, the rod out this way. I'd just rather, you know, let's, let's do things a little thorough. You want to clean it. You want, you want the circlip out anyway. I do reuse them. Okay, i got the circlip. Ah, done. My magnificent, you know, with this one, you unscrew this and you put straight, angled, and then all this business back here, you switch. For some reason, the shape of the bits, something, it has always worked better than most all of these ready-made kind. Here's the little jar I have of, of, of bits and stuff, right? Of all the little bits. So we put that there. Get, I try to take my own advice about working out of the box. Oh, look, yet another one with uh, replaceable jaws. Can't read it. Internal snap ring pliers made in USA. Well, this one's worth keeping, huh? Number 8845, made in USA. Maybe a funny logo, CTA, it looks like. You can just feel. Solid, spring works good. Don't worry, Chinese people will eventually learn cheap isn't the only thing Americans like. My buddy was a buyer for one of those aftermarket motorcycle companies. You know, one of the parts I don't want to mention who because he told me when they'd go to Taiwan to buy stuff, Taiwan people, this was back when the chrome would come off with the bubble wrap, you know, in your headlight. He said, that's not because Taiwanese people love to make junk. That's because the American companies insisted that the headlight cost 50 cents and not $1.50. This one's a little bit easier. I'm pulling. Don't ballistic it, right? Catch it. And in it comes. Okay. And in the British thing of belt and suspenders, let's mark this one front. And up here, front, so you can check. Obviously, I'll probably bead blast these clean. There'll be a separate show. And you can see, you know, mark them back front, so it goes in. This was, yeah, because I pounded it that way. This was the, the little divot for the intake valve is there. That's the biggest screw up, right? Make sure. I think it'll actually run, but boy, it, you know, it'll get awful close. And certainly, if you're doing radical stuff, high lift cams, well, then you should be checking all this stuff anyway. You should follow the instructions. Hot rodders should kind of know this. Up here, there is a tool, special tool, to push these bushings out, push new ones in. Uh, it can close the bushing up. You know, in theory, you're supposed to have the rod out of the motor and do a sun and hone, but sometimes you can get away and hone it here. I've had horrible luck with uh, brake hones, you know, little three stone springy things you use for brake, the old brake master cylinders. Uh, they've belled out everything I've used it on. So if you do, if these are worn, these look good as new. They're very long lasting. You know, don't just replace them because you're in the motor and you can get to them. Uh, there's stuff about put the piston pin back in and lower this down to a plate and make sure the rod isn't bent. And they do bend, but that's one of those things, hey, it was running when it came in. It's personal. I'm not doing it for a customer. So we got that. Ooh, I uncovered the uh, rock, the lifters. Maybe that's what we we'll do next. We'll do the, uh, this next primary last. I don't know. We got to decide. So that is that. I will get my you know, I'll clean these up, get, get my really special box, get all this stuff in there. Uh, here, you, can, well, you barely see it. That's the push rod tubes and all of that stuff. If they're not in plastic bags, they will be. And all of that will go, it depends how heavy it's going to be. Might be smart to separate the heads and cylinders so it's easy to move this stuff around. So, 1982 Iron Sportster, cylinders off, a little bit of stuff about working on the heads, how to see stuff, how to store stuff, all of that, a little bonus footage. Hope it didn't bore you folks. Sports to Paul here. We will catch you next time. Bye now.